Welcome back, guys. I'm Metal7. This is Football Manager 2018. This is the beta uh, early access save, uh, 18.0.2, I believe is the version. So I'd said I was going to go back and quickly play through the first half of the season or so with Knotts County again to see if I had similar results, to see if I had problems with uh, team cohesion, to see if we still had the injuries that we had, uh, to check all that. So just to go back really quick, unfortunately, I didn't have a save just before we were fired. I had a save a few hours before we were fired. Um, but I've gone back to check my inbox, and you can see uh, just before the game we lost that got us fired. This was our record here. We were uh, 18 games. We were uh, only two wins. Well, it shows how many. This doesn't show us how many draws, but two wins, 14 points. So if that's uh, six points there, that means we had eight draws. And, uh, yeah, eight losses, I guess. Something like that. So 2-8-8 eight and eight for 14 points. Now, injuries are, again, something we couldn't look at very well. But on our previous save, if we take a look. So we'll go back a little bit earlier. Um, well, here, we'll look at... Yeah, we can't look at anything in there. So let's go ahead and we'll load a game. And we'll load the last save after... Or, I'm sorry, before we got fired. As you can see here, uh, 1,700 versus almost 2,200. So five hours before we got fired. Uh, I don't know what happened to the auto saves. I thought it was supposed to be doing them a little bit faster than that. Um, so I'll have to look to see. Uh, local versus cloud, nope. So we'll go ahead and we'll load that real quick. And uh, it's a few games back. I think it's only 16 games in. So I guess it's not too far back. It's two games earlier. That's not terrible. Um, in fact, let's take a look at the schedule. I don't know. It's, it's farther than that. Um, so it was after this game. So we had a Bradford City game, which we lost. A Lincoln game, which I don't remember if we lost or won. Um, and then we lost these three here. So five games previous. So if we go ahead and check our injuries here. Medical Center. Uh, injury his, uh, season summary right here. You can see that we had a lot of players, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten players that had missed at least 20% of the season, at least three weeks plus. And this is a month before anything else was going on. Um, and the current injuries at that point uh, were these here. So you can see uh, he was only, those two were only out for a day, uh, a week to two weeks, a day, uh, one to two days, two to five weeks, four to four weeks to two months, and two to four months. Now, as soon as I was given the ultimatum, um, right up, just after this, actually, right? Let's check the schedule. Um, I was given five games, one, uh, including this one. So it was supposed to be these five right here, but I was already out by that point. Um, after the Lincoln game, we lost two more players um, long term. So uh, they were, I believe... We got Amiibe back and then lost him. Is it Amiibe? It's either Amiibe or John Steed, but we lost one of them long term and we lost somebody else for like three, three to four weeks. So we did have two more big injuries at the end of that. So you can kind of add, you know, a few more weeks to that injury. And uh, so you already knew that you had a couple people that were going to be out for a while. So that was our injuries. If we look at dynamics, uh, Match cohesion was average. Locker room was actually good when I was fired and just before getting fired, oddly enough. And my leader support was average. So uh, my firing happened fairly quickly after this. We were looking more or less okay at this point. Uh, I had hoped that if we came back and we studied our tactics, that we would see a little bit more cohesion than this if we worked a little harder on cohesion, which I didn't really study. I figured because we're losing, because we weren't training it, um, we weren't going to do very well. And you can see here, we've got a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there. And it will actually tell you some. Um, untested partnership, they haven't played together for significant periods of time. Um, however, they're good at, at, at what they do. And apparently, we can't click off that. There we go. Uh, and same thing. Uh, they've played fairly poorly when played and are not a good partnership. However, both play well with what they do. So we can kind of see some of these things here. Um, anyway, if you go to your training section, you have both a training here for team cohesion, but also a teaming training here for teamwork. Both of these are supposed to help with your cohesion. Uh, and it should tell you that cohesion understanding on the field. 
So I decided I'd go back, I'd try to play one formation, and we'd work much more ex uh, extensively on team cohesion and teamwork. So let's go ahead and see how that worked. Um, I played right up to the same point in the season, the Yeovil game. Whoops, no, we don't want to save. Cancel. I just want to load. Load. No. <clears throat> there we go. Losing my voice a little bit here. I don't know why. Well, because I taught for five hours earlier today. Probably has something to do with it. All right. <clears throat> so, since we were talking about cohesion most recently, let's take a look at cohesion. So, let's take a look at our tactics. I ended up having to change tactics purely because the team threw a snit fit and demanded that I change tactics because they weren't unhappy. Of course, when we went to our dynamics page or to yeah, dynamics page to see who was unhappy, the only person who was unhappy was Michael O'Connor. Um, they weren't happy due to the poor locker room atmosphere, but the only people unhappy was Michael O'Connor and at the time, six people who were worried about the atmosphere. So the only thing bringing the atmosphere down was the people worried about the atmosphere. Otherwise, we were fine. Um, is what it is. Uh, now you can see we're, we're underachieving a little bit, so maybe we're on path to getting fired again, although at this point we haven't. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at our tactics and we'll see what we've got going on. And we can see uh, Dickinson is not our normal there. Let's go ahead and put Daniel Jones back in there. Uh, Elliot Hewitt, Yates, Milson, Jorge. Uh, Alessandra's not our normal. Let's go ahead and put uh, Liam Walker back in there. And for the most part, we've run Jonathan Forte. So this is kind of what we end up with. Uh, we do have a pretty good partnership in here in the middle. Uh, and you see Milsom is responsible with his area. Um, no, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to see this. They have a decent partnership, having played together often. So that works. Again, decent partnership, having played together often. And I'm assuming this one, if we can get it to pop up, which we can't. Apparently, there's no way for us to get that. It just wants to give us the other pop up. Oh, there we go. Decent partnership, having played together often. So our three midfielders here, we have something. Uh, Hawkridge and Jones, uh, untested partnership, have not played together for significant periods of time, except for pretty much the entire season at this point. So I'm not quite sure why that's that. We've been we've done that a lot. This is the 4-4-2 we started with. Uh, there's Hawkridge. There's Jones. And again, you know, they've only played 18 games or so together at this point. But clearly it doesn't work. And this was our 4-4-2. We've got a little bit there. We've got nothing there. Uh, well, that would have been different. That would have been uh, Forte and... Um... Let's show unavailable here. Um, there we go. This is mostly Steed and Forte in some some formation or another. Whoops, expand that back. Anyway, you can see that we do have a, uh, a strong partnership and they played well together while they played. But again, you know, this is, we played this probably 12 games and we didn't build anything. And if we check our training, you can see we worked on team cohesion a fair amount there. Um, and do we not see how long we worked there? Let's go team. I guess it doesn't show us how much we worked on this. We worked on teamwork most of the season, probably us, because we started with a 4-4-2. We were already pretty good as far as, um, as, far as our match tactics. So we ran this probably more than half the season. Uh, so we spent a fair amount of time on that. And you can see if we go to dynamics, again, we're just average, which was what we are before. So as far as I can tell, this training does nothing. This and this, they've done absolutely nothing to boost anything, as far as I can tell. They're completely worthless. I wouldn't waste time on them, um, at least not at this point. They, they made no difference at all in the training that we did. Um, you know, I say almost 20% team cohesion, and we probably got... 50 to 60 percent teamwork up here all told for the season although i don't obviously see where we can look at that so uh yeah it didn't it didn't do anything 
Um, we did run a four four one one, which is why that's named that for like one game. Um, but is what it is. So we didn't really get much out of any of that training. So I wouldn't do it. That takes us to injuries. Were my injuries better this time than they were last time? So season summary, I have fewer players that have missed 20% plus. I've only got four players this season with that. Uh, Dickinson, Steed, Amiibi, and Michael O'Connor. Uh, with Callum Sanders, you know, closing in. However, if we look here, we can see that we're going to have some players that continue to miss significant chunks. Milsom's only one to three days, but we still have two to four months, or yeah, two to four months on Amiibi, six weeks to four months on John Steed, five weeks to three months on Michael O'Connor. So, you know, we're realistically going to miss, ah, oh, geez, I don't know how much more. Um, you know, they've already missed three months. Amiibi's probably got another two to three months. Um, Michael O'Connor, two to three months. John Steed, two to three months. So, you know, these guys are going to miss most of the season when all is said and done. And I closed the door so the cat's working on it. Hold on just a second. <clears throat> So the upshot is, while I had fewer injuries overall throughout the team, or fewer players injured, I'm probably going to end up with a similar total missed time for the season, which is pretty significant. You know, if we have at the end of the season, and I've got, you know, five months, six months, and eight months, just for three players, I mean, that's, that's considerable. Um, now, granted, two of these players are very old. Um, John Steed, 34 years old. Uh... Amiibe, 36 years old. Um, and Michael O'Connor was injured when I took over the team. He played for one season, got injured at some point. I don't know when. Um, but he's he's also 30 years old, so he's he's not a spring chicken either. This team as a whole is pretty stinking old. So if we go here and we go insert column uh, general age and we take a look, 37, 37, 36, 34, 32, 31, 31. I mean, look at that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 players over the age of 30. And we can see everybody over the age of 28, their performance is dropping pretty dramatically in most cases. Um, and while we do have a couple of young players uh, who are playing well, um, you know, we've got a couple just not very good players either. You know, Hayden Hollis isn't getting any better. Thompson actually has played pretty well for me this season. You can see 7.14 for the last five, 7.1. Uh, he's very, he's a very good defensive uh, midfielder, ball-winning midfielder, that sort of stuff. Within that role, he's excellent. So, um, but very limited youth here. And you know, here's my. You can see that there's a bunch of my starters here. You know, there's, you know, right there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> are under 30. But most of my team is over 30. So. It's a tough team to uh, to play that game with, or to start this. Uh, and they don't have team. To, they don't have the money to rebuild. They don't have a huge amount of talent. Um, I mean, if we look here and we go ahead and check potential, um, they have some. Um, but again, over thirty-two, so we can kind of ignore that. He's he's done. Um, shortly. Uh, He's on the downslide already, although he's played well for me this season. There's a 29-year-old. Uh, he's on the downslide. Hawkridge has played well, but he's 27. Another year or two probably is all that's left out of him. Michael O'Connor, he's done at 30. Um, but, you know, they've got Grant Yates, uh, although those two are loners, as as is Lewis Robinson. Um, so, again, you can you can take those players off too. You know, I mean, if we, we go ahead and we go uh, unavailable, take care of all of our seriously injured players, and uh, well, we can leave that. I guess we can't turn off players who are on loan here. Anyway, you get the idea. This is a team that's going to have a tough time regardless. Um, the other thing I've discovered while playing this is an 18.0.2, the match... Um, Tactics or whatever it's called, um, tactics, match plans, doesn't work. 
Um, I, I built this and my goal was I wasn't really going to do any real coaching game to game. I was just going to go through, um, rotate players as I would. And I, I, I worked much harder at actively rotating players this season, which is probably part of the reason I had fewer injuries um, or fewer numbers of players injured. Um, the older players, I still ended up with huge injuries, but, um, you know, limited to the super high risk guys, I guess. Um, but my goal was just to rotate players and work my way through and everything would work off match stats. And you can see here, if we're drawing in the first half, we're at a standard. If we're drawing in the second half, it's supposed to switch to control. If we lose by a goal, we, we go more aggressive control. If we lose by, uh, I guess that's all I did. I just, if we were losing by one plus, we switched to control. Um, this was supposed to be probably a losing by two, and I just typed it in wrong. We were supposed to be going attacking. Um, winning by one goal, we go to counter. Winning by two, defensive. Winning by three, contain. So that should be pretty easy to keep track of. You know, we get our little, when we're playing the game, we have the little bar up here that tells us, has a little icon for what um, our mentality is. That never changed. Um, also, if you do this here, we hit use against Colchester. We go away. We look somewhere else. We look at a couple of things. We come back to our tactics. We click on match plans. Ah, I'm actually surprised it's there. Every other time I've done this lately, it's just flipped back to default. Um, here, let's try it. Let's do something else. Let's do continue. And let's see if it stays there. A little bit of a little bit of a test here. Tactics. Match plans. Still there. Hmm. This is different than has happened earlier in the day. We've loaded. So potentially the reload has fixed the problem. But I wouldn't count on this working if I were you. Uh, at this point, because like I say, I've played for the last couple days, churning through however many games we've played. Uh, um, well, 18 league games and uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 23 games that matter and 5 more that don't. Um, and I didn't see any evidence that that was working within the games. So I think it's a really neat idea and it did work previously. It did work before the update. We saw it work within the videos, um, but I did not see it work within these, within these games. So uh, don't counter at the moment. Hopefully it'll get fixed in the next one. Um, it seems to be something that was working that they broke. Um, I haven't looked up any information on it at the moment. That's, that's just my own personal experience right now. Um, one thing I will say is that if we do take a look at how we've done this time through, we have done a little bit better. Out of 18 games, we have won five, so we have 20 points. So we're six points up over the previous playthrough. And as you can see, we are moving on to the second round of the FA Cup and the Checker Trade Trophy. And Port Vale and Grimsby are both... Uh, oh, Grimsby won a couple games recently, so they've jumped up recently. But they're both winnable games. You know, neither of them are world beaters. So we could conceivably move on to the third round and, and third round up here as well, or however that works within the check of trade. I don't honestly plan on playing through that. Um, I haven't really enjoyed Knott's County this go round. Uh, they're a bad team in a bad place right now and in the game. I know that they are winning in first place in real life. Uh, clearly the injuries haven't absolutely destroyed them as they've destroyed us. Um, and you can see here, finances have dropped um, below zero here as well. So they're down to minus 200,000, um, and it's not going to get any better. Uh, they may make, I mean, they're going to make a little bit of money throughout the check of trade and the, the, the other cups as we go. Maybe they'll make another 50 grand, uh, but that's not, that's not even going to slow the bleeding, really. Um, and I'm significantly under the, well, not significantly, but I'm under the payroll. Now, one thing that, this team does have going for it is I did play with transfers a little bit. We do have two players coming in in January, Dan Scar and Liam Noble. So they will get a little bit of help in the midfield and a little bit of help in the defensive backfield, uh, which may turn things around if, if, if in fact I could survive for another month to get to January 1st, but I don't really have any interest in that. So, um, I would say that's it for this final experiment. Uh, heavy rotation of players was required. Uh, I did my absolute best to make sure that players were rotated to try to keep people fresh. Um, that did help. Running the 4-4-2, I think, long term, uh, we can see here, you know, I did get more wins early. 
um, you know, we did okay through here, and then in here somewhere is when they started complaining. So we ran that 4-1-1 for a game and maybe two games in here, uh, and then I switched to the 4-3-3, just trying to do something, get a little bit more offense. And uh, we managed to get three games in a row here. Unfortunately, only one of them was a league game. Uh, so it doesn't it doesn't help our form per uh, too much. But we, you know, draw, draw, loss, three wins, you know. So in this stretch, we've got three wins, three draws, and only two losses. So that's not too shabby. And like I said, we put together a pretty good stretch up here as well. So it was a better season all the way around. Uh, however, they have recently lost a few more players. So now it's going to be relying on more of the young guys. Um, let's go back to our filter here. Uh, we'll turn that off again. Um, you can see John Steed is going to be out. So I don't know why it should. That's not what we want. It doesn't give us the uh, selection. What if we just go regular? It used to be you could click on the deal here to get stuff to pop up too. I guess now you have to do it from tactics. Um, I didn't mean to hit continue. Tactics. Reduce. There we go. Um, so now we have to rely on this guy. Interestingly enough, this young kid that I brought up just to have a little bit of depth because I have so many old strikers um, is now listed as my highest rated guy, which is pretty cool. Um, he's a young guy, um, 21 years old. This is one of the bright spots on the team. Dribbling's up to 14, good heading. First touch is still pretty poor. Finishing is 10, which is fairly average for this team, to be honest. Composure is actually at a 10 is, is actually good for this team, believe it or not. Um, he's not very fast. 10 and 10, uh, despite being only 21 years old. So there's a cap. This four-star, I think, is probably a little bit ambitious. I'm saying a three-star. Um, but if you decide to play, the, it, it was a nice... We've got him a few games. Um, you can see we got him four four appearances, um, four starts and four subs, and then a sub and a check of trade as well. So, uh, you know, hasn't done too bad. Only one assist. He hasn't scored a lot of goals or anything. Um, but they feel he's our, our next best guy, which is kind of an interesting deal. Um, yeah, I mean, we can see here our goals mostly came from Hawkridge, who played well. Liam did okay. Uh, and we've been getting a few since we switched to this formation out of Grant. Uh, he didn't score early, but he has scored recently. So, uh, And we had eight goals from John Steed. He played actually really well early in the season. Uh, and we've got four from uh, Luis Alessandra, who we've played as striker, but also out on the wing. So... That's how that season went. Uh, I just thought I'd give you a quick update on that, and we'll kind of end this video for now. And uh, we'll be back hopefully with another team of some sort. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers.